this is I-4. These are these murders here, 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 all coming along to be the I-4. 2004, 2005, 2010, 2011. Hearing Walter's story, we can't say we were surprised. The local sheriffs weren't saying the words serial killer. I'm looking for the public information officer for Polk County Sheriff's Office. Well, unfortunately, he's not in the office today. Carrie Horseman, please. Uh, the PIO. Um, there are no borders between counties. There are no borders between states. We have to all work together. How aggressively are you guys going back to some of the old unsolved homicides? The ones that I'm particularly interested in are the ones along I-4. Um, I don't know. I'd have to, I mean, I know we have a cold case squad and a hot case squad. Um, so we have no singers in office. I eventually got in touch with the FBI to see if they had any answers. When I spoke to one of the officials over there, I was told, how did you come across this? And I said, well, you know, I've been covering these cases, these murders, and now we've had 19. And I see a pattern. One of my surprise moments was I said, in fact, we are. We have a list of about 28 that we've plotted. The disturbing reality is that Pacheco had stumbled upon a series of serial murders, ones that numerous law enforcement agencies outside of Daytona either didn't connect, didn't make public, or refused to admit. This is a much bigger problem and much bigger story than I ever envisioned it. To picture the slaughter of 28 women, all seemingly connected, is not only staggering, it's terrifying. But were we now dealing with a completely different serial murder? One we were calling the I-4 killer. But there was another twist to this nightmare. A private investigator named Bill Warner, who's convinced the terror we're facing is much bigger than we could ever imagine. This goes back to 2007, when a woman in, in the Kentucky area uh, had contacted about a missing daughter of hers. Bill tracked down the girl's body to Ohio, but he soon noticed the same repeating pattern with other missing women, which eventually led him back here. In Florida, it revolves right around I-4, I-75, and up the coast to I-95, even across I-10. How many are we talking about in Florida? Altogether, maybe 60. But according to Bill, Florida is only the tip of the iceberg. The more research I did, the more I dug into it, the more I found it was happening all over the United States. I see cases in Kentucky, there's like four different girls in Cincinnati. What about these girls? Did they ever find her? Nope. In her case, there's no body. Another girl that you looked at? Just gone. Another one? Gone. Over here? Gone. A lot of them have not been found at all, period. They're just gone. They just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Initially, Rachel and I were skeptical of Bill's claims. While we knew from our cases in Long Island, Atlantic City, and now Florida, that sex workers were being killed in record numbers, how could this many women go missing and there be so little outrage? Yet as Rachel and I would soon come to learn, while many of us were seeing patterns, the FBI was seeing patterns too. In 2010, they released a map, one that revealed the systematic murder of over 500 women all over the country whose bodies have been dumped along the highways. The reality is we weren't just dealing with one serial killer, but according to the FBI, hundreds, all working the interstates and all committed by a special breed of monster known as the long haul serial killer. <laughs>